Hey everyone, I'm Mecca here, and um, I am sitting down with Ryan, one of our students from my self-publishing blueprint, and uh, we are just going to chat about uh, his unique publishing journey because Ryan hasn't published a single book in over one year. All right, Ryan, welcome to the channel, man. Great to have you here. Yeah, this is exciting. Thanks for having me on. All right. Hey, so let's uh let's talk about when you first started um publishing and uh you know what kind of got you into the whole idea of like making money with books on amazon and you know the whole passive income thing and uh then we'll bring up everybody up to speed with where you are today mm -hmm. well i i think uh, like like most of us i started realizing that uh that there was i didn't want to i didn't want to be in a situation where i had to depend on how many hours I could slug it out every week to have income coming in. And at the time I was a tennis coach. And so it was even more personal. It was like, I saw it as I was giving away my body in exchange for money. Right. And, and, and as I was getting older, I just didn't want to be in a situation where I was grinding myself down week after week just to get a steady paycheck. And so I, I knew there had to be something else out there. And, and so really started looking into different ways that I could create some income and take that pressure off of always having to be working, to be able to take a vacation and know the money's still coming in was, uh, was a big motivator for me. So you started back, was it 2016, I think you said? Yeah, so in 2016, uh, started really piecing it together, deciding I'm gonna commit to it. And if I commit to something, I really, I go all in and I, I, I do everything and I do everything that it takes. And uh, yeah, so that was kind of like I had my starting point of like, okay, at this point, I'm now a publisher and just started thinking like that. How did your first couple of books do? The, you, know, you know, even just to kind of back it up before the books, I had more, ch starting, a, starting publishing was a lot more challenging than I was ready for because just how independent it is and okay. how you, I just, I was so programmed in my mind about you show up at a certain time right. and work. And then you go home and it's done. And so it was really weird to be in a situation where I had to decide how much I worked. You could put in as much or as little as you want. So it was a really weird dynamic for me. And what I found is I got frozen. And so, and I, and I, when I read on the Facebook group and stuff, I totally understand where people are, where they just get that point of, they're so paralyzed to take that first step and, and just, just go and just go. And, and you're always just like, don't worry about it. Just keep publishing or don't worry. The description doesn't have to be perfect and stuff. Right. And my mindset was like, I, I guess I was trying to write the perfect book or have the perfect book made. And, and so spent way too much time on things that I look back were just not important. And, uh, and over, I overvalued things that I, sh I shouldn't have. And so it, I, what it ended up doing is just taking too long to get books out. So the books did fine, but but like it brings in a couple hundred dollars that you're not that excited about it. And you just see like, wow, I, I just grinded out like more work than my work. Right. And I've got this book that's making me $200 a month. How exciting is this? It's not that sexy. So, so when, when do you think was the switch for you? When like how many books in did it all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, now we're picking up some traction. Now we're making some more money. Now I'm getting the hang of this whole publishing thing. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it, it, I really started realizing just, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to just like getting enough volume in and making sure that the books are getting out there and, and doing some stuff like you talk about in the course about how to optimize and get to use the books that you've already used and, and, mm -hmm. and get more, get more out of them and stuff. Um, once I started getting that mindset and then it really started snowballing and then it was awesome because then you couldn't stop me. I was like, Oh man, I'm doing, I'm going to do two books a week, no problem. Six books a month, you know, eight books, whatever my, uh, whatever my VAs and myself can kind of handle, but like, let's not limit this kind of thing. It really started bulldozing it. And, um, it, it was, it was finding niches that I believed in and that I actually saw the results coming in. So not dabbling so much of like, Hey, let's put, cause I was very like, again, just really caught up in the scared mentality of like, Oh, I'll put one book in this niche and see, and just sit there and wait and hope it's good. And if it's right. good, I'll do it. And so just not going all in. And, uh, and then, so not getting all in results. So it was like, I was putting in a half effort and I was getting a half result. And, um, and then when I decided, you know what, I'm just going to start putting books out in this niche because I believe in it, the numbers are there. And then all of a sudden, boom, everything just it found the place. Awesome. Um, and then fast forward to um, now, right? How many books have you published this year? 
so I, um, I've been, I, I'd hate to say I've been lazy about it, but basically um, I haven't published it. I feel it's hard to say you're a publisher when you don't publish. Books, <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I haven't done anything and it's been, it's been a long while. And so, so this year has been uh, no books. I've been uh, kind of taken in by my, my other business, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about in a bit, but um, basically I've just been letting it run itself, run its own course and, uh, and just receiving good uh, monthly paychecks. And I, I monitor, I, I, I kind of laugh because I'm around, I would say probably about 20 to 30 minutes a week I put into my Kindle. Really? Yeah, what, what are you doing for those 20 to 30 minutes? Um, just going on and, and putting just, books on their free promo or, okay. or putting it on its 99 cents promo or, yeah. and then updating my VAs that these are my books that I'm, that I'm doing this week kind of thing. So really it's yeah. a, it's an email and, and just finding on KDP just where, um, what books I'm going to do on promo this week. Kind of so, thing. so about two hours a month ish. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, at most. <laughs> at most, yeah. Okay, so max two hours a month. You haven't published a single book all year, and you're still making thousands of dollars from these books. Yeah, um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. That's that's been really great, and just the dependability of it, just knowing it, it's gonna be, it's gonna come in. It's just, it's been great. Um, really how, how does okay? So let's talk about like. So you're you're also. Are you a real estate agent or is there a different term? No, um, I'm a real estate investor. Investor, okay. So how does, how, um, explain how the Kindle income has helped supplement that and why it's been so important to have that passive income coming in that you're, you don't have to really, t I wouldn't consider two hours a month work. So basically it's like nothing. Um, but you have, you know, a couple grand coming in every single month. How has that helped you in your other business and just you know your overall life yeah it's made all the difference it's it's absolutely awesome because basically the way i see it is we have our base that we always want our bills paid for and know that everything's going to be okay at the end of the day everything's going to be okay and then once your basic needs are covered then you can start looking at let's create like wealth and let's start yeah. looking for the lambos and stuff like that but we need to know our basic needs are taken care of and what kindle has done to me and i'm so grateful is that you know kindle has provided me that that blanket and that security that i know at the end of the day everything's going to be okay and so then using my real estate uh, business to like, let's really build some wealth because Kindle as great as it is for paying the bills and bringing you to this level, you're not driving a Lambo uh, from Kindle. It's right. Like, it's not going that high. Yeah. And so, so what I started doing is like, okay, so I'm good here. This is good. I'm always going to be uh, steady. My bills are taken care of. Now let's find ways to really like 10 exit and really bring it up. And so that's where the real estate came in. So it's like, I have that safety blanket. Now let's really ramp it up. Whereas if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be able to ramp it up as much because I'd be so worried about just getting the basic sure. needs the covered. The basic needs covered. So it's really been, a, it's allowed me to be a lot more aggressive in my business and, mm -hmm. uh, and a, lot, a lot more fearless and, and be able to get better results from the business because I know that my, my basic needs are, are good. They're covered. That's awesome. I think that's like one of the most important things. And, that right there is the number one reason I think people should get into, into publishing. It's to have that passive income taking care of your basic expenses, your basic needs. So you can focus on creating wealth. You can focus on the fun stuff, right? Yeah. Like that's what you said. You were talking off camera. Now, instead of looking for as many houses as you can to sell, you just look for the home runs that are going to make you like six figures. Yeah. Right. You just look for those bigger ones because you don't have to worry about, you know, the heat getting shut off if you, yeah. you know, not selling house for a few months or whatever the, the, the case is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I think it's really important that, that we don't look at Kindle as the end game, but it's the starting point yeah. and it's creating that security. And then you can dabble or start off into another business. That's going to be like a really, like a very, uh, like a six good six figures and, and beyond a profitable business. Mm -hmm. But having that steady first to make sure that I think that's I think that Kindle's a great jumping off point for that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's not even that you want six figures, but it's gonna give you the freedom to then go in and start something that you're more passionate about. And yeah. something that maybe isn't gonna be the, the big build there, but it's gonna be something that you wake up excited about and now you have that opportunity because your basic needs are covered. And without that happening, 
you're spending all this time at a job, you don't have time to, to you know, explore your, your passions. And so I, I think it's, you can kind of use it as one of those two ways, either as a potential baseline for wealth building or a potential baseline for just being able to explore your passions because I, I can do whatever I want. You know, I take off to uh, Ontario for a month and you know, I can still do my, my one email a week and, and, and be good. And be good. What are some tips or pointers you could give people like just starting off, like maybe looking at some of the mistakes you made so, you, so they could avoid them? Yeah, it, kind of like what we were just talking about earlier is just um, just keep your feet moving. You got to keep your feet moving. Don't get caught in the, in the like one of my other mentors says, don't get caught in the weeds. And you just got to you got to kind of just keep moving and and using the course, take the information, apply it. But you've got to apply it. That information just sits there. Um, the you know it does it does you no good and uh, and that's one of the challenges when people try to learn through YouTube and books and stuff is that is that you have to be doing it yourself and that's where I love that you offer like an actual one-on-one -on -one coaching because at the end of the day that accountability gets the books open to make sure that you're actually using the information that accountability factor because that book otherwise you have like I have my bookshelf over here those can be that could be a wealth that could be millions of dollars worth of information or it could just be a bunch of trophies it's up to me it's up to me to go and take the information and apply it so i'd say just like make sure you're doing stuff just and it sounds it's almost too simplistic but it's like make sure you're actually doing what you're supposed to be doing right. and um, and just stay stay in the big picture um the big picture is you need to get a, a enough books out there um and you can, you can make adjustments on the fly as you're going and stuff and just don't wait for it to be perfect. There's no perfect niche. There's no perfect book and book description and, and covers and stuff. You could just, you're just going to spend a lot of time um, and time something you're not going to get back. You're going to spend a lot of time. You're not going to get that extra. It's not going to make you a proportionate amount of money extra. What the time that you just spent worrying about is your cover perfect or not. If like some people, like, did you keep learning from, from book to book to book? Like I saw posts and it's like, you know, so there's been a lot of talk in one of the groups about creating um, a checklist. And um, I always thought just following a lesson was a checklist, but it's like, you know, when you go through a book, at least for me, when I published my first book, you know, then I was like, okay. And I published the second and I was like, oh wait, did I do this on my first? And I realized I missed the step. So I do it on the second and then I definitely do it on the third. And then I'm like, oh wait, I don't think I did this on the first two. And like, I kept learning, mm -hmm. you know, each, each step along, uh, along the way, if, if, if that makes sense. But did you find that as well? Like every book you published, you were just getting better and better at the process. And thus they started making money. I, I, I got more and more efficient. And okay. So the checklist so I, I wasn't missing steps because at first it's like I waited I waited for the book to come in before I got the cover done I'm like right. great great job like that's a great use of your time right. now, um, and so I've been doing that another it's a little bit of a tip I'll throw out there but one of the things that I've been doing is I give I give for my audio books I send the book to them ahead of time before I've even published it so it's not even launched yet and so I have the audio book done before I've actually put it on to Kindle and that way, from as soon as it goes up, he's right away sending me the, and so we're trying to, because we're trying to get as little lag as possible. And so I'm giving him preview copy so that he can have it all done and ready to load. So day one, when I put it on Kindle, the, the ACX version goes to, um, goes to the boys to be audited. So, so that's really interesting. So how do you do that? Because don't you have to claim the book through Audible? Like, how do you get the narrator's info or, or? So, so I have ongoing narrators. That I, that so the same ones you work with all the time. So I have their actual emails. Right. So send them the book via email and say, look, get this, uh, get this done. You tell me when the audio is done and then I'm going to load it on to, to Kindle. And that way we can catch this really fast because it, it like, you know, ACX takes a while for it to approve the book. And so if it's going to take two weeks, I don't want to put the book on then get it narrated and then get the two week approval. The, the, the window's too small there. And so what I do is I get it done. It's approved within the first two weeks. So as soon as that book goes to full price, boom, the thing's ready. Bro, so that was effing genius. I just, I just messaged my assistant, <laughs> you know, I'm like, yo, we need to start doing this. Yeah. That that's awesome. Yeah, that's absolutely. a really good tip. Thank yeah. you for that.
it's just I love what I learn from students. Right? Like it's just finding ways to be efficient. Yeah. The publisher love the the my narrators love it because they know from day one like They're that book. Old. Yeah. And they, they want that new book boom as well. And so it's like let's not wait for this thing to be going down before we yeah. bring it. Let's love catch it. it on this day. Freaking golden, man. Freaking golden. Awesome. Hey, Ryan, thank you so much for, for taking some time to, to chat with us on the channel here. And uh, you're not, yeah, you're active in the Facebook group, but you, you got like a million dollar, multi million dollar real estate business you got to run. So, yeah, yeah. And I, and I still, I, I read every post. I, I still, um, yeah. I really like that group. That group has actually ignited the feeling that I had back in 2016 when I started things. So I'm learning new things again and I feel Switch. like that again. Because there was too long of a period where I didn't feel like I was, I was learning new things and around people that had these new ideas. And so I'm seeing this stuff. I'm like, oh, that's so smart. I really, I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting to be able to share things like how I'm doing things. Because I, I might not have the direct day-to-day kind -day Kindle publishing that you guys have as far as experience, but I have my outside business mind coming in. So those yeah. things like, hey, let's cut corners on ACX and get this going. That's just my business sense kind of coming in. I didn't learn that in a course. That's just me. It's just business. Yeah. No, I, I feel you. I feel you. So sweet, man. Well, hey, thank you so much, Ryan. This has been a blast. And uh, yeah, until next time, everybody, we'll speak to you soon.